Today, let me talk to you about the evolution of medications for inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis. As you probably know, both these conditions happen because the immune system of your body is attacking your own tissue. In ulcerative colitis, it mainly affects the large intestine, but in Crohn's disease, it can affect pretty much anywhere from your mouth all the way to the rectum and even beyond, sometimes causing anal fissures and fistulas. Both of these can also have manifestations outside the GI tract. Over the last many decades, the treatments for this has evolved so much. As we know, we have had steroids for so long, and they're very good medications to control inflammation and also to suppress the overactive immune system. So for many, many years, the only medication we had was steroids. This was very effective in cooling down the inflammation, but there was a problem. We cannot use it long term because steroids give so many side effects. Then came other medications like mesalamine, acetylcholine, and these were used for many years and still being used to. But they did come with their own issues. Mesalamine was very effective for ulcerative colitis, but not so much for Crohn's disease. And it was not very effective if it was severe disease. Acetylcholine, on the other hand, can be only used as a maintenance agent. When I say maintenance agent, basically, once inflammation is controlled, you can use it as a maintenance agent to prevent flare-ups. And there was problems too. Small risk of skin cancers and a small risk of a very rare but, but very dangerous cancer called hepatosplenic T-cell lymphoma, especially in young male patients. Then started the search for newer medication. And then we came up with biologics. All the biologics we have are basically antibodies. They're made from living organisms. Imagine there's a big cascade of events which has to happen in order for body to have inflammation at some point. All these biologics act on some points on this cascade, reducing the inflammation. The first ones which came into picture was something called infliximab, and then came adalimumab. These were very effective. They were very fast as well. Infliximab and adalimumab had its own issues. They did increase the risk of infections because you do need your immune system to protect you from infections. There were also other many side effects which came along. We started exploring more and more new biologics which were less likely to cause infections, less likely to cause an increased risk of cancer, and we got the new ones medolizumab, ustekinumab, which were less likely to cause infections or cancers. But the inflammatory bowel disease is so complex and so unpredictable, there is no perfect drug. So the research continued, and here we are at the latest forefront of this evolution, the small molecules. Unlike biologists, these are not from living organisms. They act on much more finer steps in the inflammatory immune response cascade, that overall they are less prone for side effects. The first one we had was tofacitinib. It was very effective, it was very fast acting. It usually acts in few days, but still did come with some risk. Cardiovascular risk, high cholesterol, risk of mustard infections. Because of the amount of research happening in inflammatory bowel disease, newer medications just keep on coming. The most latest in the market that I've been using are Rinvoq, the generic name being Upadacitinib, and Skyrisi, which is Rosankisumab, which is actually a distant cousin of Ustekinumab. And I have to mention here, Skyrisi is actually a biologic. It's a monoclonal antibody. So as you can imagine, there are too many medications out there. And I bet more and more new ones are going to come. It's challenging for patients as well as doctors because there's no fixed algorithm to follow in any case. Many times, patient has to go through multiple medications before finding the right one. One thing I can guarantee, the research is so strong. I don't know when, but years down the road, we probably will have one medication which is so easy to take and so effective the inflammatory bowel disease will be so easy to treat and much less complicated.